Guys, what's up? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com where you learn to code smarter. In this video, what I wanna talk about is string length function. I don't know why I did that actually. But essentially how this function works is that if I give you something, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my hands today. If I give you something, a string, and you tell me how many characters are in there, okay? So by now, hopefully you should kind of know the format of how these problems are laid out and how you can solve them. And you can also look at the tests, like the cert tests that I have to kind of cheat, right? Like, oh, this is how many inputs it takes in and yada, yada. Okay, so try this problem on your own. I have the notes below in the YouTube video. I have the exercise solution below. And if you want to, you can go to my website, cleverprogrammer.com and enroll in the course so that it can keep track of everything. And then, you know, it's all nice and all in one place. Anyways, let's keep going. So I'm gonna write the solution right now. So spoiler alert, close your eyes, kids. If you haven't tried it, do not look at this. You don't deserve to look at the solution if you haven't tried it on your own already, okay? Go try it on your own. Let's get, let's get to the solution now. So first thing I'm gonna do is DEF because it's a function. Then string length, because that's what I told you the function name should be, right? Write a function that takes in a string and returns its length, right? So um, the function is called string length, right? Inputs, how many inputs does it take? That takes in a string. So the word uh should give you a hint that it's only one thing. You can say string, you can say my string, you can call it whatever you want, okay? I'm just gonna call it my string to let you guys know that there's no special meaning behind the word string itself, so you don't need to like know what it does. What this function requires you to know is how to do a for loop, okay? If you can do a for loop, you can solve this problem very easily. So I have my string, now what do I wanna do? I'm gonna run through that string and count each letter, right? So if it's hello, I wanna count that, I wanna keep track of every letter that I see. So when I see an H, I go, I hold my finger up like this, like one. When I see an E, I go two. When I see an L, I go three. I see another L, I go four. When I see an O, I go five. And if I'm run, if I have run out of characters, I wanna just output five, okay? so. It sounds like something that I wanna run multiple times. Sounds like a loop. For letter in my string, right? If I do print letter here, you guys can see on the right hand side that it's gonna go through that and it's gonna print the letter. I have to call the function, of course. String length and let's give it hello and let's run it. And on the right hand side, you can see that it goes H, E, L, L, and O, right? That's great. So we have access to each character. Now, what do I wanna do? I wanna have a tracker variable, like count, okay? And I wanna set it to zero. And every time I see something, I wanna increment it by one. So count is equal to count plus one, or count plus equal one, because it's such a common operation, so we just increment by saying plus equals, okay? That's how you're gonna see it written down in Python pretty much everywhere, and if you're programming in some other language, like C or C++, you're gonna see it written like this. All right, so I have count equals count plus one, so I'm incrementing count by one, right? Increment count by one, and how many times do I wanna print out count? Every single time or just at the end? If you think of that question in English, you can answer that very easily. I only wanted to return the count once. So should it be part of the for loop or should it be outside of the for loop? It should be outside of the for loop, good. Okay, and I just wanna hit enter so it looks nice. And, um, and yeah, now let's try this, let's do print and my function, right? Let's see if it prints five. Okay, it prints hello, and then it prints out five. We don't want to print out hello anymore because we know it works just fine, and you get five. How does it work if you really break it down? Well, to my function, I pass hello, right? 
So this part of my string becomes hello. Then this becomes hello. The first time we're going through the loop, this is an H, right? Then we just count it by one. Then the next time we go through the loop, this is just an E. And then we count it by one. Then next time we go through the loop, this is an L. Then we increment by one. Next time we go through the loop, it's L again, and we increment count by one. And then last time we're an O, we increment count by one, and now count is five, and then we return five. Now, if you notice, do we, do we use the variable letter anywhere else? No, we don't really use it. So you can say whatever you want here, or you can just put an underscore here because we don't really use it anywhere. So we don't care what that variable is, but sure, we'll just, we'll just leave it as letter. At the end of the day, I wanted to return count. Now let's test our function. If it prints out your code is correct, then our code is indeed correct and we are done. Let's check it out. Oh, whoops, I can't hard code a value here. I have to change this to my string and let's run it and it says your code is correct. Now guys, we're learning all of this to build something big, okay? We're gonna build our own rock, paper, scissors and I don't mean like codecademy.com, let me hold your hand and here's the entire code and you feel like you did it but you didn't really learn anything. I mean, you're gonna be doing practically the whole thing. I'm gonna give you the bare bone pieces, but you're gonna be writing your own code. And I really want you to be able to do this completely on your own. So it's really important that you do all of these exercises and try your best to do them on your own because you will need all of these pieces to, to then go and try to build your own game. So we're gonna start off with a simple game like rock, paper, scissors, but then after that, we're gonna do something with Twilio API, which is the text messaging, app. you can build pretty much your own text messaging app, okay? And you can actually send people text messages on their phones. So we're gonna be doing some really big stuff here, all right? No more baby stuff. But I want you to be prepared for that. That's why I have this for you guys, I have notes, I have solution notes and everything. So take advantage of that, use everything at your disposal, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and do not miss the next video because in those all of those videos that are coming up, we're going to be covering covering really important things. I'll see you there.